In this video, I'm going to help you draw a water strider. Some people call them water bugs, water skeeters, water spiders, all kinds of different words for these things. Uh, but water strider seems to be the most popular, so that's what I'm going to go with. And if you want to know their scientific name, you can look it up on Wikipedia. If you just type water strider into Google, the Wikipedia article will come up and it can give you the scientific name for them. This is the photograph that I sort of based the drawing on, but we're not going to be drawing on white paper. I'll just show you real quickly what uh, the drawing will approximately look like. Yours might be a little bit different. We're going to be drawing on colored paper, kind of a tan or a gray, and it's going to look something like that. Okay, so what you need to do is to copy the pattern page. There's a page that has these little lines. There's dots here and a circle and this little, just a couple little lines to get you started so that you, your bug is the right size. You know, you don't end up with something way too small, way too large. Or what's really bad is when you, you start too close to the edge of the paper and then you run off and it's really difficult. So you'll need to copy the paper that has this thing on it onto some kind of tan, brown, gray, even like a, a, a light blue would be fine, but some kind of colored paper because we're going to be using a white pencil. And if you draw white on white, that's not going to show up. So see how well the white shows up here? If I put it, see that's, white's not going to show up very well. So you need some kind of toned paper. The drawing materials you're going to need are a regular pencil with a nice eraser on the end, and you're going to need a very fine point pen of some kind. I use this, you can see it says Micron. You can order these on Amazon or some art supply places. This is my favorite. This is waterproof, and you can see the tip is really fine. This They come in sizes. This is a, uh, oh, it says right there, 02. Okay, so um, 01 is probably a little too fine. 0 0.005 is ridiculously small. 03 is probably, would be okay. Um, but my favorite is the 02. And um, they, that's, um, there's a decimal equivalent. You can find out how many millimeters wide and stuff, but I just know them by the 01, 02 on the pen. So there it is if you want to order one of these. These are the absolute best, but you could probably substitute Sharpie makes a fine point no bleed. Now I have to particularly get the one that says no bleed. Um, a Sharpie no bleed is probably more like an 03 or 04 in this. It's a little bit wider than this. If you wanted to try a ballpoint pen, you could do that. You might be able to use a ballpoint or any kind of really tiny, fine, like I said, the, the finer the point is, the better. This is really, I don't know if it'll go blurry, but it's really very fine. Okay, so because this is going to be a technical drawing, we're going to be drawing skinny little legs, and you want a skinny pen for skinny legs. And then you also need a black and a white colored pencil. And, of course, I always tell people my favorite here. See, it says Prismacolor. These are the absolute best. Prismacolor. If you can get these, these are worth it. Go on Amazon and get a set. Um, that's a good place to get them. Um, but also a good art supply place. Although Amazon will get you a better price. But you really need to get these Prismacolor. If you can do this project, you have other colored pencils, go ahead and try them. But especially like for white, when you're coloring light, light colors onto darker paper, these Prismacolors, they're just creamy. They go on really nicely, nice and thick and heavy. These are really nice pencils. A little bit expensive. If you've never shopped for them before, uh, you might, you, the first time you see them, you'll kind of say, ouch, because these pencils are like a dollar a piece, basically. If you can get them for less than a dollar a piece, that's good. But they are really, really worth it. They are excellent. And then you'll need also, if you have the colors, but you'll need um, kind of a medium brown and kind of a light goldenrod tannish brown. The exact 
color isn't really important. Kind of a medium brownish and a medium kind of yellowy brownish, something like that. But the exact exact color isn't bad. If you have a little darker brown, a little, you want to use some, it's fine. Okay, but you just need approximately something like these. Okay, so we're going to start out using the sketching pencil. Now, every time I teach sketching to kids, I start out with emphasizing, can't emphasize this enough, when you, the first thing you do, sketching out your little light lines, you have to do it very, very gently, very lightly, because you probably will want to erase these lines. In this case, we're going to go over them in pen, and then we probably will want to erase these lines, because sometimes you sketch in pencil, and that's your final medium. It's a pencil drawing. In this case, we're just going to use it to kind of help us map it out, and then we want to erase. So go lightly, lightly, lightly. Okay, don't be grinding in. Sketch very, very lightly. And the first thing we're going to sketch in is the head. Now, this is a no-brainer, right? You can probably guess this is the eye. Duh, it's a little circle. Okay, so I'm going to kind of zoom in here on the eye. Okay, you see this dot right here? There's like three dots here. Well, the one that's kind of closest to the eye. This is the one we're going to use. We're going to sketch in the head. This is going to be the point. The head's going to kind of go like this really lightly kind of make a curvy line that comes out over the top. It's kind of like it has a trunk. It'll remind you of like a, um, a proboscis, an elephant, some kind of a butterflies of proboscis, like this. Okay. Goofy looking face, right? Maybe it reminds me of Gonzo, the Muppet Show, kind of. It's a Gonzo bug. Now, this is very much like um, the fangs that spiders have, except this guy only has one. This is what he'll use to puncture his prey. He's going to catch a, uh, maybe a bee drowned. You know, you sometimes see bugs that get drowned and they're floating around the surface of the pond. Well, this guy will come over and yum, yum, that's a meal. And what they do is they puncture the um, bug and then they put in, they dump in like digestive juices. It'd be like you spitting into it. And so then the saliva goes in and it'll digest the bug and then it'll use this as a straw then to suck out the gooey digested insides of the bug. Very much like a spider. It's not a spider as we'll see. It's an insect, but it's very much like a spider in the way it eats. So that's where the head's going to go. And let's draw the little front legs next. Let's sketch in these front legs. Okay, so very lightly, because we're not we're not sure what's going to go over what. Like we might need to erase. In fact, we will need to erase a small part of this here in a minute. So these two dots right here, you see these? Okay. This one, we're going to use the lower dot first. We're going to make a line kind of going up like this. I know you don't know where it's going yet. Kind of just going like that. And then it's going to come over right about the kind of middle here. That's where the, that part of the leg's going to go. Kind of looks like a leg now too. He's kind of like this. I'll show you real quick. Remember the finished picture. Okay, it's going to go like that. Okay. So then right here under the eye, let's draw a little kind of egg thing like that. And at the bottom here, it's nice to let's make it a little circle for us to remind us that's a this is like a ball joint right here. Okay, so that's kind of the outline for the one. And then the other one's going to go back like this, curving. And you see how I've kind of curved it, kind of curved it down just a little bit like that. Don't get it carried away with your curve. But if you make it not super straight, it'll look kind of more real. So that's where that one's going to go. And then it's going to go over and kind of just under the eye a little bit like that. Don't worry if you're crossing the, the beak there, the nose, the proboscis right now. We're going to erase that in a minute. Okay, so what goes under what? Well, let's see. This thing, this thing is going to go, let's see, we'll erase like that. The proboscis comes in front of the hind leg, and then this 
not really hind hind leg, but the one behind there. And this front leg is going to go like that. Okay, so it looks like this is going to be in the middle. And we're going to come back in a minute with a pen, and then we'll detail this out and draw it in uh, better. But that's okay for right now. We've got what we need. Okay, so let's zoom back out, and let's draw some more legs. I'll show you, the, make sure I can see the whole paper here. Okay, there. Okay, so let's draw in this front leg here. First, I want to draw, right, see this gap, this opening? This is where it's kind of like it's shoulder, sort of elbow, shoulder to elbow region is going to go. Draw a little circle right here. And then draw a little, really lightly, remember, and kind of an overly thing right there. That's going to be our guide for how to draw that part of the, the leg there. Okay, and then make a sketchy light line. See this dot down here? Okay, so that's where the first long part of the leg is going to come to, like this. And then this dot down here, that's going to be the next leg section. So we're going to have one, two, and then three. Make one that's kind of going out like this. Make it at least an inch, whatever, three centimeters long, like that. Okay, so then one, two, each side will have three legs. So there's one, two, now we need to draw the third left leg. Because it's an insect and it has six legs, right? Spiders of eight, insects all have six. So we're going to draw a little circle right here. Let me zoom in and let you see that. Okay, circle. Same thing as we did before, and kind of a little circle here. And then down here, there's a. Let's go back out. The next thing you need is the dot right down here. This is where. Remember, really light. Keep these lines light. Down to here. And then it's going to have three sections. This one had one, two, three. This one's going to have one, two, three. But the last two sections are going to be, you just need to kind of come out at an angle like this, down like here, and make it about, um, it's a little bit, it's going to be a little bit shorter than this one, but this is like two segments. And we'll draw those in. You're going to end about, you know, don't come too close to the paper, end something about right, right there. Okay, so that's the, all you need to have right now for that leg. And then we'll just go right around. We'll do this leg back here. Now, above where this leg joins, right here, make, like right above that circle, make a line going out to this point. You should have a point up here. Make a really sketchy light line going like that. And then make another sketchy line that's going sort of heads toward the corner there heads toward the corner of the paper. Okay, and that's, again, that's going to be, there's going to be two little sections, but they all, they, these sections are kind of, they look straight together, so that's good enough. And then the last leg over here, whoops, let's just zoom in a little bit more right there. Okay, the last leg, you're going to start right above here, over this leg is, and go like that, really lightly, remember, light, 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 light. And then there's another dot right out here. That's the second section. And then the third one's just going to kind of go straight like that. Now this is going to be kind of a weird perspective. You're kind of looking down on him, but a little bit at the side also. If you were looking straight down on him, he kind of looked like an X. Um, he'd look more like, you know, and that if you're looking straight on the side, these legs are looking exactly on the side. You know, these legs would kind of be coming out down here. So we're kind of going doing one that's not really a side view and it's not really a top view. It's kind of what they call an oblique view. So, but it looks nice on the page. Okay, the last thing we need to do with our pencil is sketch where the antennae are going to go, because that's like the definition of a insect, right? It's got six legs and has antennae and the three body parts. This would be the head, the thorax, and the abdomen. And the legs always come off the thorax, the middle piece. 
right? So this piece back here would be the abdomen. And we'll end up actually making a little thing here. There's a little part sticking off. would be the rear parts there. Okay, so let us make some very... very gently curved lines like this. Remember, keep it light, keep it light, keep it light. Now, yours don't have to look just like this. Okay, because this guy, he might have his antennas down. Remember, they like bend all around. So you basically can't go wrong. No matter what you draw, you know, his antennae might look like that at some point. Okay, so just kind of make them about that long. Let's just add one last thing here in pencil before we switch to our pen. Start right where the eye is. I'm going to zoom in for this one. Start where the eye is. Come down and touch this little leg part here and go out. We're headed to make kind of a shape. Follow this around and make kind of a pointed spoon shape like this. This is the kind of like hard plate on his back, his actual back, like that. Alrighty? And then we're going to indicate where the wings are. Sometimes the water striders have wings, sometimes they don't. It depends on the needs of the population. Sometimes they have no wings, sometimes they have long wings, and sometimes they have short wings. So this guy is going to be a long wing. See down here where I have a kind of there's a little break there. This first part curves, will curve in like that and then start right here and kind of make it like this. Nice. The, the wings are going to be in perspective. They would look different if you saw them all nicely folded out, but these are kind of laying flat on his back. Okay, so they got that. And then start down here and just connect right to here, from here to here. Connect real light and then start down here make this small start not too far away and kind of go up make it get wider like this go up so that if you kept drawing you'd make the same wing shape they'd kind of cross underneath see they're going to cross but we're not going to really see that because this wing is on top so this is the under wing going underneath okay now we're ready to switch to our pen Now we're ready to switch to the pen. And we're going to start in this region. Now you'll see I started this drawing in the head and then I thought better of it and I thought, no, you know what? Well, I want to start with this leg first. So just pretend that part's not drawn in there. We're going to do this leg first. So we're going to go around the outside here. And I'm going to make a little circle right here. This is like, um, it goes into, it's like a cup sort of, and then this part, this part of the leg, sticks in like that. So I'm going to make it look like it's kind of like that, make it a little half circle. Can you see that? Like this little half circle thing here. And then have the leg go out and it's going to do the same thing. It's going to come to a joint. Every time you come to a joint, you have the same kind of thing where the top piece goes out and over like that and you can kind of see a little rim. So we're going to pretend then this piece is, this piece is like sticking up into it like that. Okay, so let's go down to here. Now when you get down to that point, let's not make it a point. The, the mouth is going to be a point, but this actually kind of keeps going down to the water. We're not really going to show you what happens underneath the water there. We're going to make some little ripples around it. Then, uh, okay, so then now we can go back. Now that we have this leg in, now we can understand that the head is the, the proboscis is behind there, so you can start here, draw in like I had, start here, leave a little space for your antennae, and then keep going down to this leg, 
and then you can go down to a point here. This thing actually comes to a point. The proboscis is sharp. I'll go back up. The proboscis is sharp because it has to pierce. It's like a little dagger. It's like a dagger and a straw at the same time. The first thing it does is puncture and stick it into its prey and then it puts the saliva in and then waits a little while and then uses like a straw to suck up all the gooey melted insect back in. Okay, so we got this proboscis going behind the leg. Now let's draw the back leg. See, now we'll get it right. We'll stop when we get to there. Go up like that. And then over. And over like that. We're not going to see what happens to the leg. It's behind the head there. So that's good enough. Just draw this line and that line. And while we're here, let's draw the antennae. Okay, so there's four sections, and if you could look at it microscopically, it would look at it would look the same thing. That the section, the sec first section coming up, and another the other one is like coming out of it. So we're gonna kind of exaggerate it, make it look like um, I'll draw it real big here just to show you. Whenever I draw insect stuff, I kind of think about doing this. Okay, that's my stock way to do antennas and legs and things. But this is going to be really tiny. We're going to hardly be able to see. These are really skinny now. But we're going to do one, two. You see why you need your guideline here now. Two, three, and they get shorter as you go out. Four. I should have made that last one kind of more pointy. It doesn't have to be uh, like a flat end. It should be a little more pointy end. Okay, the back one. One, two, three, four. And you can kind of tell a lot about the eyesight of the insect by looking at the antennae. If it has really long antennae, then its eyes aren't very good. Because remember what the antennae do, right, is to bring uh, sensory information, it's feeling, it's it's sensing, it's kind of like nose and ears, sort of. It's, you know, because it doesn't really, I mean, it has an eye, like we do, but it really doesn't have nose and ears. So the antennae function like nose and ears. And it's gathering information about the environment in addition to what its eye sees. If its eyes are really, really good, it doesn't really need that much more information about the environment. Like a dragonfly or a housefly, they have little tiny or antennas are only like this big because they just don't need long antennas. And they have really good, you know, you, you try to try to catch a fly, right? They have really good eyesight, so they don't need long antennae. So the longer the antennae, so this guy has, you know, for a bug, kind of average eyesight, I guess. Because some of them, you'll see some beetles that have super long antennae. And when I see one of those, I go, wow, boy, you don't have very good eyesight, do you? That's what I'm thinking. Okay, so we need to do the legs. Let's, let's start with this leg here. And these are just our guidelines. And sometimes I refer back to the original picture and I look. You probably can't see very well. I can't actually either to see this kind of shape in here. This was hard to find anything where it really showed a close-up of what this looks like. But it'll be good enough if we go like this. We're gonna make we're gonna make this and then go in right there a little bit. Go back out, and then when you get down to the bottom, see where the stick is going to go in? Just make a little semicircle like that. And then up like this. And then down to here. Now it's not going to come to a point. Once again, it's going to be like... <clears throat> it's going to be like that at the joint. Okay, so kind of ignore the dot. We're done with the dot. You can just incorporate it, make the dot part of your line or something. Like I'll just go, I'll just pretend the dot is kind of on that. I'm just going to draw my circle first, my little tiny semicircle. I'll just draw that and then I'll connect that into here. And this, you just use your pencil line as a guide. There we go. 
<laughs> and then the line comes out of here. And I'm going to draw another little semicircle down there. And then the last little point there. Yeah, this one can just kind of end, just kind of go around the end like that. Okay, how about this one? Same thing, we're going to kind of use that as a general guide, except down here where the leg's going to come out and make it a little circle there. Okay, I'm gonna, we're headed down for this dot, but I have my guideline there, so I'm going to go a little to this side of my guideline, make a little circle, and then I'm going to go take it nice and easy, nice and slow. It's amazing that insect legs are so strong. They're so skinny and yet so strong. Okay, so down here I'm going to go out there like that and then finish it off. Okay, so now we just need to do back legs and it's basically the same thing except of course you can't see these right on the back we don't have this so we're just going to make it come straight out I find it easier to do the top line first and then I kind of can use the top line to draw the bottom line I find it more difficult to draw the bottom line so I'm going to imagine this is the top line coming out like this and then it's easier for me to draw the bottom line it's not perfectly straight, don't panic. It'll be just fine. Okay, then this one. And my last one. Okay, and this guy. Now, if I'm going too fast, you can always turn off the video, right? You can always put it on pause. So there we have a six-legged water insect. Now let's just finish up the back and let's put this little, you don't have to look, just kind of make a little, I don't know, pointy, scruffly, like something like that coming out the back. Maybe it's like the egg laying parts or parts where it does number two, I don't know, but it has, so it looks like in the pictures it has some little scruffy thing coming out the back. We don't have to know. Yours doesn't have to don't worry about anatomically correct for that. Okay, so now we have our guidelines in here like this. We're going to draw around like that on this big one. Like that. And then draw around the outside of the wing. Now you can imagine long wings are good for long flights. Okay, they're they're good when the when the population of bugs um, decides somehow that it's time to see in the bottom one, draw along there, and this one decides it's time to spread out and move to another pond. They have to be able to fly a distance to find another pond, so they need these wings. Sometimes if they need, um, for some other reason, to have short wings, if the population is um, being stressed in just a different way and it just needs an ability to, to fly, not long distances, but short ones, it'll have short wings. And sometimes they'll have no wings at all. If the population is very stable, it's the middle of the summer, everything's good, there's plenty to eat, you can have um, the water striders born with no wings. So this is an example of epigenetics where if you see a water strider with no wings, you wouldn't know that it could have a baby with wings, right? It has that DNA encoded, even though, you know, uh, it, there would be a strider without wings, he still has the possibility, the DNA for having babies with wings. So and it's not evolution, it's just called epigenetics um, that lets a population have some variety when it needs to. Same thing with the 
finches on the Galapagos Islands, they have the possibility of having different beak shapes. And at different times, different decades, you'll see those things come out. But it's just already, the information's already there. Okay, so one last thing here I want to add. Along in here, I'm going to draw an extra line along here. It's apparent in the original photograph. It looked like there's a, a dividing line. It kind of comes along here, kind of splits this area in half, goes back like this. And we're going to make this a different color. We're going to make that kind of little stripe of light color in there. Okay. Let's see, one last thing we need our pen for. I think I'll just do this right now. These guys, the way they stay up on the water, we're going to make some ripples around here. And the way they do this is they're, they have little hairs on the ends here that you can't see. These are microscopic. There's hairs on top of hairs, little tiny, so small, we're getting down to the molecular level almost, size hairs that trap air. And so you, you can't see it, and scientists didn't know this. For years and years, they had no idea how the water strider could walk on the water. It doesn't even get wet. I mean, it's on the water. It, it's not in the water at all. It's actually on the surface of the water, and they didn't know how uh, that was possible. So then, let's see, um, we're going to draw a little circle, a little line. Actually, let's have you draw the circle first. And if you have a circle guide, you can use one. If you have something where you want to trace, I'm just going to kind of do a freehand circle. I'm going to, something about right here. Scientific drawings often have little, they call insets, where they want to show you something close up that you can't see in the regular drawing. So I'm going to make a little inset here, a little circle. Because I've got this nice blank space here. Like I said, if you want to use something to trace, or you could make it a box. It doesn't have to be a circle. It could just be a, it could be a square box. A, but something where we're going to draw inside of it, and then an arrow pointing to where that is. So this is going to be a close-up. If you looked at a little tiny piece of this leg, we're going to show you what it looks like. So what does it look like? Well, it looks like, let's see, I'm going to imagine this is my leg here, so I know where I'm going. And then draw a little hair kind of going like that, and then trace over like this. So these are called micro hairs or micro setae. They're not technically a hair. Actually, I'm going to make mine a little smaller. They're called micro setae, and they're tiny little hairs you can only see with a microscope. And not only that, the hairs have hairs. So now we're going to have to draw hairs, and these things are really tiny. These hairs these little hairs are like the size of a width of a bacteria. They're so small. These ones here, if you had, like, you could draw a bacteria. Oh, there's a bacteria in there. That's how small they are, the size of a bacteria. So you can imagine how small these hairs are. They're really tiny, 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 tiny. And they trap minuscule little air bubbles. So it's hairs with hairs. And if you want to write a note to yourself, a microscopic hairs. I'm going to put hairs in quotes because it's not really hair. It's like hair, but it's called setae. But basically, hair, little tiny, what we, a very loose meaning of hair microscopic hairs, and then I'm going to add trap, I'm going to go right around here, trap, tiny, air bubbles. Now, you don't have to do this. You can, you can write it somewhere if you want to write down here or something, that's fine, or not write it at all, it's up to you. 
but I'm just going to add a little note so I don't forget what that is. So that's how, and if you want to put little round bubbles in there, and it go, the air goes in between these little tiny things. So you don't want to clog up your drawing. Don't make too many little bubbles, okay? Because you don't want to, you don't want to get it too busy looking. But these tiny little things trap air bubbles so that it's basically lined with air and the air pushes away the water. It won't mix with the water and it just, it's like it's gliding on a cushion of air. Just like in those, um, you played like air hockey, those little pucks that glide around on a cushion of air. So basically that's what's happening. It's providing the air cushion itself right there. Okay, now it's time to use the eraser. Any little pencil lines you want to get rid of. And if you didn't get rid of them, it would be okay too. Sometimes artists decide they like sketchy look at the lines. But since we're going to be putting something on top of it, we'll just get rid of them. Okay. Looks good. Let's see, I smudged my paper. Alright. Now we're going to use the black and we're going to fill in the eye. Now it's very important here to leave a little white spot in the center of the eye. I'm going to not fill it all the way in. I'm going to leave a little, actually a little off center is nice. You can kind of plan. I'm going to leave that little spot right there. And it's the little white spot, it's like the little gleam of light. That's what's going to make it look alive. If I filled that all the way in, it wouldn't look like it was a real living eye. But with that little white spot there, it actually looks like a shiny little eye, doesn't it? And of course, he really has a compound eye. If you could look at it under a microscope, it would look like a whole bunch of little, like this. It would look like you've probably seen insect eye. Each one of these is a little lens, but of course we're not gonna draw that. That's way too complicated. And then on the other side, let's put a little bump here. Let's put a little, like you can almost see the other eye on the other side, sort of. Okay. And then um, I'm just going to put a little bit, just a couple of these on the antennae to make them a little darker. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Okay, so let's make his proboscis look round. You want to make dark on the underside and then gradually going lighter. And it's a little bit tricky down to a point. So that's good enough right there. Okay. So the trick of making things 3D is to make the transition from dark to light very gradual. Don't make it look like a stripe. And he's kind of dark so I'm going to kind of go like that. Okay, so how about these legs? Let's just make a line on the underside like this. And then on the inside here, really, really skinny. Just a tiny bit. Underside here. And I'm just gonna kind of fill that in lightly like that. So it looks like it's behind. And then this thing, kind of round on the bottom kind of darker on the edges and leave the middle lighter like that and then if you'd like to take your white and just go on the top like that it'll really look like it's super 3D Okay, and this part of his back, <clears throat> it is kind of a grayish brown bug. So let's use your brown, your middle brown, not your lightest one, your middle brown, very, very lightly. 
kind of color this in brown, but let it be kind of blotchy <clears throat> because they're they're kind of mottled. You know how water, like in a shallow creek, water doesn't look blue in a shallow creek, right? <clears throat> you can see kind of that muddy, the, the bottom will be all pebbly. And so this guy wants a little bit of a camouflage. So he kind of is like a brownish, blackish kind of model-y kind of like that. So he kind of blends in with the bottom of the creek or the pond a little bit. So make him kind of rough like that. Same thing down here. This is part of his back. We'll kind of blend the brown and the black together like that. Okay, let's work on these little leg segments here. Same thing, let's make the bottom the darkest, because I'm imagining the light is coming from the top, like sunlight. So the bottom would be the darkest, to be the shadowy part. But these are generally, I think I'm gonna cut, make it all black though, because it's it really is a darker part of the bug. Okay, same thing under here. And then behind here, this is also a dark part of the bug. Now you wanna make this, can you see how this dark behind here, it looks a little bit darker, so that little leg piece looks like it's sticking out. sort of brown right here okay and then take your brown your lighter brown I'm gonna put in my little lightest color right on here the photograph that I was using had a little light stripe I kind of like that just artistically it looked nice Did a little lighter area like that and see the wings now I would, if I were you, I think I would take the, I would take the, the pen, and we can make some really thin lines along like this. To look at, you know, the wings have those veins. Make one go along like this the inside. One like that. And then to my second one, I'm going to bring down, since this is bigger down here, I'm going to have it go like this, and then I'm going to come back and separate, and it can do another one like that. It's like a, it was like a Y. Because I'm not going to be able to fit many of these, right? I'm about on my last one here. So maybe I'll make this one go along the edge like that, and then make another one come out like this, like this. So you just kind of fill this up with some little lines like that. Like it looks like those little net vein, net like veins in the wings. And then here, let's just put a couple. One along here, and then I'm going to come back and go like that. Like that, just a couple lines there. And then I'm going to just put a little like sheen on the top there with the white like they're shiny or something, just a little bit. Okay, don't make it real, real hard, just really lightly. Okay, let's finish the legs down here. I'm gonna do the middle leg, not the front leg, but the middle leg. All I'm going to do is make one line along the bottom. Maybe I can zoom in a little on here. I'm just going to very lightly make one line right along the bottom edge. Just just go, just go lightly like this. And if it doesn't, you know, like that part got a little skinny. I'm like, oh, I can't fit a line in there. Fine, just skip it. Don't worry about it, okay? And do the same thing down here, just a tiniest little bit, just a tiny bit. OK, 
Okay. And then you take the white, and in that remaining little space, you just put a little white line going along there. Like that. Okay, and see how that kind of makes it look 3D? It's not neat, it kind of pops it out. Down here, like that. And like that. And then you want to do that on the other legs. Do it on the underside. Imagine the light is coming down. So this this kind of would be the underside. So so it's not it's not the left side. It's the underside, right? So if the light's shining down. I'm imagining it's kind of coming here. And if yours are too skinny, then don't worry about it. If you have to use one or the other, I'd pick the white. Just make a tiny tiny skinny line. A little tiny bit does an amazing job. The last one, I'm not even sure I can really fit white in the last one at all. So that's okay. And we'll do it on the back one. Remember, you can pause the video if you need to. And on this one, let's see, I think this is probably the underside. I'm going to go with this one. Oops, I got a little too thick there. It's okay. It'll be fine. You can just go over it with white a little bit or something. And if you want to, the Prismacolors, they don't erase really well. That's, that's the downside of them. They don't, but they probably erase well enough that you can get, you can see there, I fixed it. Then I put the white over it. I, could, I erased well enough just to pick that up. Okay. Okay, so now for the watermarks. So when these things rest on the water, they create a little dimple. They actually push down, it would be like pushing your thumb down into some stretchy dough. If you had like bread dough and you'd push your thumb down into it and make like a little dent, that's what the foot's doing. And it can do that because water sticks together. You've probably heard of surface tension where the water molecules stick together. I actually have some models of water molecules and these are, they're actually magnetic. And, but they stick together kind of like real water molecules do. So I get the magnetism going there. Okay, so the water, real water molecules stick together like this. Okay, so on the surface of the pond, the water molecules are all sticking together. So it makes it hard. It makes it like a stretchy elastic sheet. So they can kind of, they stay together and you can push down a little bit. And they'll, they will, they'll, of course, they'll eventually break apart, you know. Yeah, you can stick your finger into a pot of water. It's not difficult. You can poke it. But on the, on the small scale of the insect, it would be like um, us trying to poke through a piece of cardboard or something. It's, the water is, is much stiffer to the bug than it is to us. And you can kind of see the limits of water's ability to hold things if you try to float a paper clip on the water and you can do it if you're very gentle you can lay a paper clip on the water so the water will actually hold something as big and heavy as a paper clip but then if you put another one on top of that no two paper clips it sinks it's not going to do this so it has its limits but it's just just tough enough to be able to hold up the water skater so that's your little physics lecture of the day about how water molecules interact. Now we're going to make some little circles. Actually, I'm going to start here. These are the easiest. We want to indicate that these look like they're in water. So what you need to do is take your white pencil and you can draw a little circle around this one, kind of a half circle. Don't go all the way behind it, see? And then 
make a little ripple going out like that, little kind of half circles like this. Maybe one out like that. Okay, and you can do the same thing around here. Do a little circle here. Maybe that one will come down a little bit. And this guy. Doesn't matter exactly where they are, it'll work. You can make one or two, kind of, see I'll make one that's kind of like a little bit less big than that one. Okay, so already it looks like it's water. Now to really finish it off, we want to make a little reflection here. Sort of little, take your, I, I'm taking my red and just kind of going like this. So it looks like it's reflecting kind of. Okay, so that really, lo they look like they're in water, don't they? See, that wasn't hard. Okay. And we want to, now these are going to be a little bit more difficult um, because they're not going to be round. This, you imagine, this is going to be making a kind of an oval shape. So, kind of do something like that. And then I'm going to ripple out like that. Now, if you look at photographs, they don't really look like this. This is an art, a, a, a sketching way to make things look like they're on water. I'm going to actually add a little bit of a tiny bit of a highlight there so it kind of looks like it's a dimple a little bit put a little bit of light going like that but if you see a photograph um, the the it's really hard to actually imitate a photograph it's pretty difficult so we're just doing this it'll be fine okay so let's see well oops I got a little speck on the paper okay same thing here imagine kind of a little Overly dimple. And then ring going away like that. So I'm making mine kind of complementary dimples going that way. Make the curves the same. See this kind of imagine that these are the same oval, it's just kind of a little bit bigger. Okay, and the same thing here. I'm gonna make a little just like we were shading the underside of the body with a black, except now we're using white. We just want to make it get lighter and lighter. Just like it's it's like shading with white. And let's do the back. whole thing. See how these two segments are in the water? It's not the same as the the front pair. The hind legs, both those segments go in the water. Your little marks don't have to look exactly like mine. <coughs> Maybe you wanted to put yours down here. That's fine. Just as long as they're a little place. And I'm going to shade just a little bit here. Like that. This is the last one. So it'll be just this segment. Okay, just this end segment here. This is the... Um, the leg, these, the middle legs, I mean, these are the front legs, right? So the front legs it uses actually to help grab prey. And this is what it uses to push. These are the pushing stroke, like you would use your arms when you're swimming. This is what makes the push stroke. And the, the rear legs are used to steer mainly. Okay, so let's see if he looks like he's in the water. 
Sure he does. Okay, one more thing you may want to add. Now this is optional. <clears throat> if you have trouble drawing very lightly, you might not want to do this. Okay, you can take your middle kind of, I'm going to use the brown, you could use black, but I'm going to use this kind of middle brown. And on the side, I'm going to make a shadow here very, very lightly with your pencil on the side. So it looks like there's a shadow under his body. This is the shadow of his body. So it's kind of going to be the shape of his body. So you know, we're kind of imitating this shape here, making this shape but down here. Okay, over here. And it actually would kind of eventually join up with those things if you want to. If it was his real shadow there, he'd be kind of like almost joining up with those things. Okay, really, really light. And then there would be a very light shadow underneath this. Very light, don't make it very stripy. Very light like this under here. Let's get focus in here super light except when you get to right where it's at the water when it's touching you can make it darker now you see when I did that it looks like it's touching now okay that's the secret of shadows when something's actually touching the shadows darker and then it gets when the shadow gets further away if I were to make it dark if I were to make this red dark right here it would suddenly look like this leg was touching the water but I don't want to do this because I know that this leg is up over the water I want to be able to to know that there's space right if I stuck my hand in the picture I could go behind the leg I want to make sure that it's over the water so make sure the shadow, if you make the shadow too dark right here, it's going to look like the leg is touching the water, and we don't want that. Same thing over here, though, if you want to make the shadow right here next to the leg, right where it's hitting, it'll be darker, like that. And then really, really gentle, like that. Now, in reality, so you can do this a little bit back here, too. If you want to, you can make a little little shadow coming out like that and over here oh, this one's really flat though so this one's going to be but the shadow will help tell that it's flat so then there would be somewhat of a shadow coming over joining the leg but you know what if we don't put that in I think if we put it in it's going to make it too I don't know complicated I think that's just good enough if we just leave it. I'm just going to take it out and just leave that as a suggestion. It would go, it would go, it would go something like this. If you wanted to put it in, it would kind of go something like this. But it would be super, super light. And there'd be one kind of like under here. Very, very, almost you can't see it. You may not even be able to see what I'm doing. But like I said, it's this is optional. If you don't want to put these shadows in, It'll, the drawing will still look good. So, Okay, now if you want to add notes, things that, um, that you know about water striders, um, if you want to go get some information, if you want to write little things about you know notes for yourself here, you can make this into a scientific drawing and add, add information if you'd like to. This could be... Um, Instead of doing a report or something, this could be like a visual report where you just put your information right on there. Or you can keep it as a, a more art type project. I'm just fussing with it. I love to fuss. If you can also go find some pictures if you want to. Use the Google image search. You can find some pictures and you can add, like for example, <clears throat> probably there's some segments on the proboscis here. We didn't draw segments, so there's probably some segments here, and there's probably a little... So if you want to add some more details, you can always uh, do that and add some more details. So it's up to you how you want to finish it.